Hello everyone, welcome to San Diego State University Open House. The School of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences is happy to have your attention. Congratulations if you've been admitted and know that we are rooting for you if you still haven't got the good news. I'm here to welcome you and also to introduce you to some of the academic things in the school and also our undergraduate advising team. My picture just jiggled a little, but my name's Kelly Lan. I'm on the far left. Next to me is our advisor, Louise Chatignier, and our lead graduate assistant, Elise North. In human services, we have four bachelor's degree programs that divide our large 2,300 student plus body, and three of those programs are nationally accredited. We have a 98% director approval rating, which I find impressive because that's how things get done is when people want to follow the leader. Um, and so we typically don't see this high of approval rating for directors in university situations. So I've been here a long time and I can say that he is an inspiring and great leader. And so great things happen. So we have a high approval rating for our boss. Um, we also have a really high faculty evaluation from students. On average, our faculty has an overall of a 4.79 out of 5 for teaching effectiveness and just generally being well-liked by students. We also have a very low elective student attrition rate, which means that once students qualify for the major, they don't leave. Um, of course, we have students that don't quite meet the GPA hurdles before in the lower division section, but once they qualify for a major, they're typically happy with their learning and they see relevance and they enjoy their faculty. And so anyway, they do not leave the major once they decide. And we all know that this boils down to time and money. So we like that our students stick with us once they're upper division and with us. Our school mission is to create leaders in really all areas of health, fitness, and rehabilitation. So that's going to cover injuries, diseases, illnesses, healthy people in clinical settings and gym settings. So, you know, the most extreme of settings, we want to be on the forefront of movement science and nutrition science. And so as faculty and people in their academic life, we want to give them a platform for doing research, for thriving in the classroom giving them those professional hands-on experiences that they're gonna need to be good practitioners. So our mission is to create those leaders. And we have a couple degree programs set up in one of these areas, specifically exercise sciences, to help us achieve that mission. Our degree programs and curriculum in the exercise sciences includes a kinesiology degree with a couple different emphases, and we'll talk about those. But before we do, I wanna talk about our impaction so we are a highly impacted school, meaning that people are interested in our field, which is a good thing, but you have to have really high GPA to transition from the pre-major or lower division area to the upper division area. So because we're highly impacted, you have to have nearly a B average to be able to make that transition because, again, a lot of people are interested in doing something similar. We look at that as a good thing, by the way. Um, we also like to say that we feature a very interdisciplinary curriculum. We have, you know, neuroscience mixed with anatomy and physiology. Of course, the regular exercise and science disciplines, which we're going to look at in a moment. But we also do a lot of interdisciplinary research with engineering and psychology and statistics and all other sorts of departments on campus that are interested in what we have to offer and vice versa. Our super core or what all of our degree programs have in common are these classes that you see listed. And it's a mix of you know, natural sciences, formal sciences, applied sciences, but everyone takes these classes in the School of ENS, and then they specialize based on what their degree emphasis is. So everyone listening to this video is probably most interested in getting a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. And if that's the case, your student or you are gonna take a set of core exercise science classes. And these are going to include courses in sports medicine, where you'll, they'll learn all about like first aid and injury responses in common sports injury scenarios. Um, they'll also take courses in exercise physiology, so learning about the acute and long-term responses to exercise. And they'll also take labs, so they'll do experiments about, you know, um, altering the environments that students are in um, and just doing different kind of experimental scenarios, looking at our physiological response to exercise. They all take courses on measurement and evaluation, which is typically how we quantify human movement and how we do research, basically how we look at our statistics in the, in the discipline. Um, they'll all take courses on biomechanics and basic intro physics to get them ready for biomechanics. 
and they'll take courses on motor behavior. And this includes the subjects of motor control and motor learning, which are all basically features of neuroscience, and they play a role in teaching or figuring out you know, how people learn, exercise, and physical activity. So everyone on board gets these courses. But then we move into different areas of specialization. The pre-physical therapy emphasis, which is our biggest group, um, probably two times the size of the next biggest group. Um, this guy, these guys have a very heavy lower division. So when we talk about lower division, upper division, lower division is the first two years, upper division is the second two years. Their first two years is by far heavier than their second two. It's a graduate school prep bachelor's degree. So they have lots of lower division sciences, they have labs, they have heavy unit loads. And then as they transition into upper division those last two years, it lightens up and it gets a little less stressful. They already apply to their graduate program by fall of senior year. So the moral of that story is if you're already accepted to the bachelor's in kinesiology pre-physical therapy program, it's a rough ride the first two years, but then it's a smooth sail and you're on your way to doctorate school, which we'll talk about next in the career section. But moral of the story is it's a grad prep program, heavy in the sciences, light in the upper division. In contrast, the fitness specialist emphasis, which is also a kinesiology bachelor's in science degree, this program features a really light lower division section. First two years, light in sciences, not a lot of um, you know laboratory work and pretty low unit levels. It's a nice transition from high school or whatever they're coming from. Then though, they go into upper division coursework and it's a very lockstep course sequence. So it works in a very regimented fashion and they have lots of hands-on and practical applied coursework that requires prerequisite knowledge. So it can become difficult for them to schedule and move their way through um, and not so much on our part, but just in terms of keeping up with jobs and social life and whatever else they have going on. But theirs is set up opposite, light on the first two years, heavy on that back two years. But the moral of the story is that they get hands-on and applied coursework so that they're ready to go out and certify. And this is different than the pre-PT program because they're not prepared to apply to grad school. They don't have an adequate amount of sciences and labs, but they are prepared to go out and certify to become either a strength coach or a personal trainer or something in that realm, or even to go to other types of graduate schools. So we'll talk about that next. We do have several master's and doctoral programs that students are interested in. Um, most of the time interested in physical therapy, so our biggest cohorts and application pools are in the doctorate in physical therapy program. But we also have a master's in exercise physiology and a dual master's in nutrition and exercise physiology that a ton of our students who are either on the fence or wanna go into fitness or are interested in doing something with athletics really give a strong thought to. We are also working on our master's in athletic training, which will hopefully be ready um, in 2022. And so if your student's interested in doing that, we can work with them on what additional few prereqs they would need to take to be ready to apply when they're finished. I want to talk with you a little bit about some of the research that we do in this school. Um, so we do lots of different student-engaged research. We work with students both undergrad, grad level on all sorts of projects in both DPT and the undergraduate work, which features exercise physiology, biomechanics, and motor research. Our research is interdisciplinary, which I guess just after spitting off all of those different subjects, you can imagine. But again, like we also do work with outer departments as well. We work on problem solving in the areas of health promotion, fitness, disease prevention, rehab, sports med, and performance. But kind of interesting, I've been here for 20 years and I've seen a huge shift from our research interests going from solving sport performance problems like, you know, why can we not run at high altitudes and Kenyans can, to things like, you know, let's how can we prevent diseases by training the mitochondria and cell level disease preventative things. So we're still using exercise physiology, but now we're not doing it so much in the performance realm. So a little bit we are still, but I'll share with you a little bit about some of our research. So some of the most interesting things, and I'm not going to point out faculty, publications specifically, just areas of interest and how our students gravitate towards sub-disciplines within some of these areas. 
So we look at health promotion. We're interested in getting more people to move and do physical activity. So some people are interested in the sociological aspects of that. And we have one faculty member who is super interested and very successful in digging into the problems with religiosity and physical activity. So the problems with different types of churches, mosques, different religious facilities, and what type of physical activity they're programming and promoting. And same with schools, private schools versus public schools, and religious-based private schools versus public schools. So he's looking at problems with basically an inadequate amount of physical activity in some of these settings. But students are interested and gravitate towards that based on their own experiences. Um, one of our my favorite faculty research stories is we are very interested in exercise, of course, for school performance. And so our director, actually Dr. Mahar, his research looks at kids in schools, if they run before school, they're more focused in class. And so his research looks at before school programs, like before school running clubs, which your child may have had one at. And if you are a student, then I'm sorry, I always act like I'm talking to the parents in these. Um, but students, you may have just come from a school who had a before school running club. And mainly it's for primary schools or elementary schools. But kids do better in school when they run first. And I love that we, you know, birthed that research. Um, we also do a lot with the disease prevention and rehab area, like I mentioned. And we have people who are experts in physiology that work on this realm and people who are experts in motor control and biomechanics. So our physiology people, some of our projects going on, we have, you know, where we're looking at different forms of exercise and whether that changes calcium loss because of that, of course, prevents diseases of bones like osteoporosis. We also are looking at things like um, bionic ambulation. So we have a rehabilitation area. We have this exoskeleton robot like the one in the photo and it's like a couple generations old but essentially it transmits neuro power to muscles so that people with spinal cord injuries can walk and so long story short our exercise physiologists are measuring people's responses to working out in this robot and really it is working out so they're taking people who have disabilities that are using this robot for exercise and measuring the exercise responses so essentially we're just studying this population because we have this suit that we're using for rehab. Um, we also do validation studies for different companies. For instance, there's a wheelchair arm ergometry comp company, and we're validating their, um, you know, their, their device. Um, our biomechanics area is really interesting. Also, we do a lot with motor control and biomechanics in terms of balance. So we like to look at balance and posture. We want to assess balance and posture, so measure it. We want to come up with instruments that we can use to work on improving people's balance and posture. And the reason why, and it, used, it stemmed from performance, and we were interested in this for sports reasons, but now we really want to fix falls. People fall when they get older, and we don't want them to fall anymore. So if we can figure out a way to improve people's balance through different types of movements and mechanical training, then we can prevent their, you know, likelihood of getting other diseases. Um, oh, this is a picture of a Wii board. I'll explain that next on the next slide. We also do research in the area of sport medicine and sport performance. So again, just a couple highlights here um, in the motor control and biomechanics area. We like to look at things like what improves performance. For instance, if you're learning the narrow beam, does it help to have assistance or does it hinder your performance? So we like to look at those kind of things and it hinders it, by the way. It helps to just let people learn those kind of skills on their own. Um, we also have a really neat area going on with concussion stuff. So currently we concuss, we we concuss, we um, assess or diagnose concussions using a very subjective test um, on the sidelines called the BEST test. And we have a faculty member who developed the software and used a Wii board actually as the balance system to get a sense of sway, which has been validated to work very well to diagnose concussions. And it takes the subjectivity out of the current methods that are used. We also have a faculty member, and the students love this stuff too, um, but he looks at preseason stuff and kid injuries. So kid pitchers in baseball, we all heard about these stories, but they get hurt. And so he looks at preseason range of motion and dictates, and there's a prediction between their ability to do range of motion exercises preseason and their propensity to injuries. And of course, this makes sense. But you know, once we boil these down to 
ways that we can use these in applied ways. It's really helpful. Um, we also have physiology people involved in looking at performance. Like we just currently did a study looking at fast start strategies and locomotion fatigue and looking at different ways to start races. Um, we also have a newer faculty member that has a youth sports specialization. And it's, students also really like this because they just came from this. But students that play travel sports um, against the ideologies of people that play club sports versus high school sports. So looking at some of the different time commitments, the different, again, ideologies really interesting research but again it's sports medicine because we're dealing with their propensities to injuries but it's sociological because we're measuring like attitudes of coaches and we're looking at huge social groups so hopefully you get a little bit of a sense of the research that we do but it's all over with exercise science and we have experts in all of these areas um, we have lab facilities we have an exercise physiology lab we have a motor neuron lab um, we have a rehabilitation laboratory, we have a um, virtual reality laboratory, we have all kinds of different instruments and devices, and I won't bore you with all of that stuff. Um, you can check out on the ENS website under lab facilities if you want to know specifics, but trust me, students are able to answer a lot of questions and address a lot of problems that are related to new exercise science in our labs. So lots of stuff covered on research. Um, careers. So taking a quick look at some of the different jobs or careers that kinesiology students take. Um, most of them are obviously going to come out of this with some kind of license, registration, or certification, whether it's in athletic training, physical therapy, occupational therapy, or maybe they're just doing strength and conditioning and they just want a certification. Um, most of them are doing it in the realm of healthcare and health and fitness. And now you're kind of seeing a trend because that's the kind of things we're doing research on and the kind of curricular areas we look at also. In healthcare, we most of us, and I'd say 80% of our pre-physical therapy students that come in are, are bound for DPT. They want their doctorate in physical therapy. So after they earn their bachelor's, they'll work on a three-year DPT program, and then they'll be eligible to step, sit for the license to earn their DPT. Once they have a DPT, they can specialize, and typically our students are interested in sports and orthopedics. Come to find out, they're in all sorts of areas that they end up in later, but I don't really get a chance to talk with them much after they leave the bachelor's level to find out what sparked their interest in neurology or cardiopalm or whatever areas they've gravitated to. We survey them, but I, I don't know the roots of what interests them to move, but most of them start off wanting to do orthopedics and sport, probably because of their experiences as athletes and sports injuries. That's what I've gathered. Um, we also see some of these students go into exercise physiology at a clinical level. So they work in hospitals doing stress tests, you know, post-surgical tests, clearing people for back to work and things like that. Um, bachelor's degree, they need a master's degree to be a registered clinical exercise physiologist. So we have a program, like I said, a master's in ex -phys that would work perfectly for this certification. Some of our students also do occupational therapy and they get the bachelor's. They take maybe two additional prereqs with their kines degree. And then they can take their master's in occupational therapy, which is a two-year program, and then they set for the exam to be an OTR. Some of our students also pursue medicine or physician's assistant programs. So they finish their bachelor's, and then they move on to do medical or PA programs. And for most of those, they'll require at least three to four outside prerequisites that are required on top of the kinesiology bachelor's degree. But plenty of students get that done in the four years, no problem. Um, let's see. And of course, we are phasing out our bachelor's level athletic training program because they have to have a master's degree starting very in the very near future in 2024. But our bachelor's degree students currently just have to sit for their test after the bachelor's. But now students coming in as freshmen, they'll have to do the bachelor's, then the master's concurrently with the athletic training education program or ATEP program. And then when they're finished, they'll take their board exam. So students sometimes also go into health and fitness when they're majoring in kinesiology, and sometimes they do that at a personal trainer level, which they can actually do now if they want to as soon as they're 18 with a CPR cert. They can also go into group exercise instruction, and both of these avenues are excellent practice for physical therapy. They also are interested in going into strength and conditioning, and this is probably the most popular area for the kinesiology fitness specialist emphasis. And these guys have to have a bachelor's degree, and they have a certification packet that they're well prepared to study for, and then they take a certification exam. 
and strength and conditioning coaches work with usually either you know high paying clients or they work with sports teams um, at all different types of levels, either high school, collegiate, and of course pro teams. Um, so strength and conditioning specialist is a very popular route for the people that want to do more than personal training, but they don't want to own their own business necessarily and they don't want to do anything in clinics or healthcare. Corrective exercise specialist, I've seen a big growing interest in this area. And I think mainly because it goes nicely with the athletic training curriculum. So you're learning about corrective exercise techniques for special populations, you know, either adapted exercise, medical exercise, and there's all sorts of little crevices and avenues you can take with this. But the point is, is with people aging, we need to figure out ways to train people. What if you can't just do a traditional, you know, hip bend squat? And we have to come up with ways that people with adapted needs, adaptive needs can also be programmed exercise. So we also see a big boom in people interested in the corrective exercise specialist certification, which also requires a bachelor's degree. So why pick SDSU? <clears throat> and I've talked way too much, and like I always do in these recordings, so I'll keep it short. But here's why I love SDSU. I've been here forever. I went to undergrad here, went to undergrad here, stayed here forever, taught here, GA'd, TA'd, taught forever since 05. I've been full-time. I love SDSU because it's student-centered. Everything they do is about students, students who have first generation, who don't have a lot of leadership, who don't know necessarily avenues of college, and students that do also. So it's for all sorts of, sorts of students, um, but it's just focused on students, and that's the point. It's not an ivory tower university that's centered on faculty raising money. It's all about how will this affect the student. Every question, every decision boils back to how will that affect the student, and I love that because that's my favorite thing about university life is the student. Um, our faculty, I could say a million things, I could give you stats, but I'll just give you in some what I've seen in the years. It went from in the 90s when we went to school and before, and again, here I went talking to the parents again, so young people also, welcome aboard, I'm talking to you too, sorry. Things are different now, as you know, because it used to be that professors were the gateways of knowledge because they had the knowledge and they shared the knowledge, but now you have the knowledge too, so all it, now it needs, the knowledge is packaged, and you need to be inspired to dig deep more into the knowledge. And so our faculty have done that, and I came into the game right on the cusp of when people needed something different than just the whole lecture to take notes kind of system, and our faculty have just, old and young, immediately gravitated to that. And I think our students just, they respect them and love them and rate them very highly. And they do care about holes and gaps, and so they're always out in the curriculum or out in the professional world doing all sorts of revisions on the curriculum to make it airtight. We do all sorts of research with our undergrads, and for this, I think that it's invaluable, but, you know, making it palpable for you guys, it's units, it's experience, and it's relationship. The people that do research, it's all intertwined with the DPT, and so, of course, the people on the admissions committee have done research with people in the undergrad programs, and it's just a good thing to do. Um, outside of units, which we can make happen for them and they don't really need, it's just a really good experience. And of course, it's a nice resume platform too, outside of just familiarity with internal DPT people. So students also really enjoy the field experiences our school offers. Um, I'll only point out one for, for lack of time and talking, but we have an adapted fitness clinic here on campus that's just its own self-sustaining clinic. It's a super low fee place where people from the community come and students work with them on their fitness and their nutrition. And again, it's adapted fitness. So they occasionally work with healthy people, but mostly it's people that need them to take individual personal considerations. And so that is a requirement for our students to to do that and they love it and it's a pivot moment for a lot of them in or out of taking care of people that one-on-one -on -one and close. Another reason I think students like ENS is because we thrive on student clubs and involvement. Our students are all about networking on camaraderie and philanthropy and I'm sure schools and clubs like that are all over but we have a ton of them that meet everyone's interests and these guys bring professionals celebrities, they bring current grad students, they bring people to these meetings and events that, again, not only are students building resumes, but they're networking, they're doing good things. And so I'll talk with students one-on-one, -on -one, but these aren't things I recommend for semester one students. Um, these are things for once you've got your feet cemented in, then you're diving into the networking part. But we have great clubs for when you're ready. I also think SDSU is pretty awesome for giving students the opportunity slash requirement back to opportunity to study abroad. 
Um, they were study abroad and we do neat things that are discipline specific, like they can go to Rome and study anatomy using Renaissance art, or they can go to Barcelona and study wine and tapas with the DPD director. So they have some neat discipline specific things set up, but they can do a number of programs and this is a college requirement. So students typically are a little reluctant about the cost, but when they come back, it's hands down the most, um, what would I call it, high impact learning experience that they have in their four years. So it's a pretty neat opportunity. And even though we'll call it a requirement, it is an opportunity. So some things to do before you start SDSU this fall and before we meet again at New Student Orientation, if you decide to take us up on our acceptance offer, um, you'll need to make sure that you have all your competency tests ready, make sure that your note taking skills are on point, and most importantly, that you have are ready for your semester one courses, which include Chem 200. And the prerequisite for Chem 200 is Chem 100. So Chemistry 100, you can test out of it. You're taking the Chem Placement Exam, or what's called the CPE, or you can take Chem 100 your first semester, or you can take Chem 100 over this summer before you get here. You can find a Chem 100 equivalent using assist.org. It'll find all local community, co community college equivalents in California. I listed up here just for convenience the SDCC ones, the San Diego Community College ones. Those are equivalent to Chem 100 and transfer here no problem. If you took a chemistry class already over the summer and when we get to orientation, you're like, I can't register for Chem 200. All you have to do is email Karen Peterson in the chemistry department and she can immediately take the registration hold off. This is rare. Most of the time students have that Chem 100 grade on their transcript, but sometimes you took a summer class, it's still not at SDSU and you're blocked from taking Chem 200. Don't sweat it, email her, she'll get the block removed and you'll be able to add it shortly. So you guys, that's all I have. Thank you for listening. I know that was a lot of information and this video is supposed to be super short, but I'm just not good at that. So thank you for the time and patience. Here's some contact numbers. As soon as this whole crazy health mess blows over, um, you're welcome to come in and visit us. We're in the ENS building, ENS 359. Until then, email us at ensugrad at sdsu.edu with any questions or concerns or comments. Um, and just know that we're so happy to have you guys. Stay safe until summer orientation. Travel safe, be safe, um, take care, and thank you for your interest in San Diego State. Bye-bye.